Today we are talking about the new HD Zero goggles and I'm going to be tearing them down. In this video I'm going to show you how to take these goggles apart, walk you through the boards, show you the components, we're going to then take a closer look at those PCBs on the display as well and show you the actual layout of the circuit and then we're also going to take a look at how to perform a slight modification to improve the stability on the SMA ports. Now I just want to say up front if you find this video interesting please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I would not have been able to buy these goggles without their support and if you find this video interesting please do consider checking it out. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the teardown and then we'll take a look at what's going on inside. Okay, so the first task is to remove any of the accessories we've got fitted, so the antennas as well as the strap, and then we need to make sure we've got the tools we need to take the goggles apart. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. I'm using my trusty Tara RC multi-driver here. This is one of my favourite tools on the bench. It has a lot of different ends available for it, but you simply need a Phillips screwdriver for this one. And we're also going to need some plastic pry tools as well, because there are some clips that hold the shell together, and this should help prevent us doing any damage. So what we'll do is we'll get all the accessories off and then start with the teardown. The first part of the teardown process will involve removing the face mask. Now you may have done this already on the goggles if you've needed to change it. If you haven't done it though, it is something that you're going to need to just use a bit of care on and it might take a bit more force than you may expect. The simplest way to get this face mask off is pull away or push away from the bottom down here. So if I give this a pull, you can see it's released. Give it a pull this side here as well and it should release, as I've said, it is tighter than you would expect. Then give it a pull, give it a pull at the top as well. We should get the other clip release at the top as we lift this up. And then with a bit of luck, there we go. And you can now see that the mask has released. Now you do need to be careful with this. Mine is actually split a little bit there in the middle. It's not something you want to be putting on and off the goggles all of the time. It is something though you're going to need to be a bit careful with because it will break because it is plastic, but you could get a replacement for these if you needed to. Now the way these goggles come apart is by splitting the top and the bottom shells. We have three screws underneath that hold them together, one here, one in the middle by the nose and one on this side here. And then there's some plastic clips located on either side at the front that hold the shell as well. Before you do that though, you need to take care and note that there are some very delicate ribbon cables inside that go from the main boards to the displays. These actually bridge the top and bottom shells and as you separate it you need to take great care not to damage these. I'll actually walk you through that process in this video but note if you were to damage these cables your goggles would be damaged and the only way you'd be able to repair them is send them off to HD Zero and that is obviously going to be a costly repair because you would have to replace the actual optics and the displays. Also be aware that you do have your sticker over here with your serial number on that does bridge the top and bottom section. Action. So you do need to either lift that from one side first of all or remove it altogether before moving forward that way it's not going to cause you any issues. So the first thing I'm going to do is lift my sticker out of the way. We're just going to separate it from the bottom shell that way it's not going to cause me any problems. Then we're going to remove the three screws underneath. As I've said already these are Phillips screws. You want a screwdriver with a medium size head, certainly nothing massive but it's not one of those tiny Phillipses that you'd see on the likes of mobile phones and things like that. So again the screwdriver like I've got here of this size is absolutely perfect for doing this. Once you've removed the three screws, you should then find the shell will start to move very slightly towards the back of the goggles. However, at this point, do not try to split them because as I've said already, if you were to just split them and you tore them, you would actually damage those cables. But again, if I just do that now, we should then be able to see that there's a bit of movement happening here and here. You can see that the shells are actually starting to separate on each side. If I lift it up, I've got the door removed there and you can now see that there's a bit of separation appearing around this side here. 
and this side here as I've started to separate it. So this now gives me an opportunity to take my plastic pry tool and very carefully place that in, slide it along and then lift those clips that hold the front shell together. We've done that side. We're just going to gently prise it up. Again, placing it between, ensuring that we're not going to split it accidentally and it suddenly comes apart. You can see we've now split the shell at the front and it's now ready to start to separate. Now, this is the point where you need to take great care. What we're going to do is place the goggles down and then very carefully flip the two ends opposite to each other, ensuring that we don't put any excessive pressure on those cables, as I've said already. So what we're going to do is place the goggles down like this, and then go into very carefully wobble the shells apart. So they release. Again, taking it very slowly. And once you get to the point where they're free and you will feel that start to happen, there we go. We're then going to rotate the shells over, keeping the slack on the cables. And you can then see them rotate over there. And you can now see, if I just tip that back a bit so we've not got the pressure on the cable, We've got the cable from the displays coming down to the PCB on either side. Now, what we need to do at this point is very carefully remove the ribbon cables from the PCB. They are connected on either side and there's a little metal plate over the top of each one with two screws on each one holding it in place. What you're going to need to do is undo the screws, release the plate and then very carefully release the connection from the PCB. That way you're then releasing it out the way and that will allow us to separate the two halves of the shell apart. For these screws, you're gonna want a smaller Phillips screwdriver than the one we used for taking the shells apart. And again, what I'm gonna simply do is hold it very carefully, go in and then release the screws on each connection. I'm gonna do a little bit on each side first of all just to take the pressure off the plate evenly. And then once you've got that pressure off the plate, I'm gonna pretty much undo one side completely, then do the other, being careful not to let any of the screws fall out or disappear into the shell. If you've got a pair of tweezers for this, it does make life a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do is go in and lift that out as one. And this then will allow me to very carefully lift this connection. I'm going to use my tweezers for this. Ideally, you wanna use something like a plastic pry tool, but I'm going to just carefully put a little bit of pressure, lifting it on each side until it pops off. And then that ribbon cable is released. And now we need to do the same thing on that one over there. So as you can see, the ribbon cables have separated nicely and now I'm able to separate the shells completely. We're going to now concentrate on the top shell, which has all of the main boards in first, and then we'll come back in a minute and take a closer look at the bottom shell with the optics before we finish the video, just to give you an idea of how that all looks. Okay, now to walk you through the electronics on these goggles. Now I will take all of these PCBs out, but I wanna walk through them in place because there's some really interesting things here. Now the HD Zero goggles are made up of multiple boards. We have a main PCB at the bottom. We then have a secondary board at the bottom layer on either side. The one on this side has our DC jack located down there in our power switch. And the one on this side has our connection for our expansion bay. Off this main board, we then have a daughter board on either side, which I'm going to call RIO boards. This one has our SD card as well as our HDMI and the other connections. And this one has again the other HDMI, remember HDMI in and HDMI out, and the headphones and all of the other options too. 
Then off the back of these boards, there's another two PCBs. These are what I'm going to call the RF boards. They have the SMAs for the antennas and these go into that board, which then goes down into the main board. On either side, we have our cooling fans. These are held in place with nice rubber isolators. This is a really nice touch, helping reduce vibrations. And then we have our strap mounts located on each corner. These simply pop out and it's really nice to see how this has been designed with these that allows them to slide into the main plastic shell, making them really secure and really strong as well. What we're going to do next is now start to withdraw each of the boards. We're going to need to remove the nuts that are on our SMAs at the top and then we'll start the process of tearing them down. Okay, so the nuts are now removed off the two ports. Next thing we're going to need to do is remove the inserts that are around the front ports. You may not have noticed, but they're actually removable on these goggles. The hole is actually much larger than the SMA itself. And the reason for that is because of the way you've got these dual ports and the way they designed it was that you had this insert that goes in around the front port that holds the SMA in place and that needs to be removed to allow you to actually withdraw the pods from the goggles. Now to do this, you're gonna to need to press down on the clips. There's a clip on the top and the bottom of it. This one here is quite easy to get to, whereas the bottom clip is going to be a bit more difficult. But what I'm going to do is use a pair of tweezers inside. Not sure if this is the best way of doing it, but what we'll do is we'll put the tweezers in and try and lift the connection from there and then that should release and then you can see that that withdraws nice and easily. We then need to do the same on this side over here. So we're just going to from the inside on this one push down and pop it out and then go to this side. I'm going to get my tweezers in and lift the connection slightly just to allow it to withdraw. There we go and that pops free. That then leaves the larger holes around the SMAs on the front and that then will allow us to be able to lift the boards out on either side. So if I just center it there, we should then be able to withdraw these boards without that SMA connection getting in the way. Before we do that though, we're going to need to remove our fans. Now these are plugged in to the PCB on either side. So what we're going to do is carefully withdraw them up first of all, but then as you withdraw it, you're gonna to need to lift the connection off. So again, a pair of tweezers comes in very handy here to lift the connection out like that. And then you can withdraw the fan from that side there. There, you can see that one a little bit better. So I'm simply gonna go in and carefully withdraw the DC power connector. And that will then allow me to withdraw the fan from the goggles. Okay, so it's now time to remove these boards. Now, when you look at this, you'll probably think that they won't come out as a pair, but they will. There are though some things you need to be aware of. They are connected in multiple places. You've got a connection at the top, at the bottom, and in the middle. You can withdraw these very carefully, passing the SMAs past the plastics. Mine have actually been out already once and are a bit easier to remove than yours will probably be. However, the process is exactly the same. To do this, what you need to do is carefully grab the board on either side while holding the goggles, gently put pressure to lift the board up until it releases from its connections, then lean the board back, give the plastic a bit of a bend just to get the SMA to clear past and then when you do that it will lift free and then you can see the boards come out as a pair. The process is exactly the same for the other side. Again, gently pulling upwards pressure to release the boards from their connections. You don't want to do it so when it releases it jerks up too much. So there it's released and what we're then going to do is gently lean it back, clear the SMA and the boards come out as easy as that. Now, as I've mentioned already, yours are probably going to be tighter than mine, but again, follow the process nice and easily and they will withdraw. Once the boards are out, you can then look at separating them if you want to. Now they are held together a bit differently. The board that goes on this side of the goggles, looking at it upside down, doesn't have a screw holding these two together. They're simply held with the connector and a plastic clip in the case. Whereas this board is held in place with a screw down here. Now to separate them, this one is nice and easy. You simply give a gentle pull between the boards the connector will release and you're then able to separate them. 
just like that. This one, on the other hand, though, you're going to need to remove the screw that is located just next to the front SMA. So we're going to undo that and place that safely to one side. And then once that's done, the process is exactly the same. A gentle press between the boards and they will separate just like that. Now that's done, you can see it leaves the main bottom PCB. Now there isn't really a great deal to look at here, but you can now see things a bit easier inside. You can now see that separate power board down here with the connections that go onto the daughter board, the IO board over here that goes to the module bay, and underneath you can see that rotary encoder there as well. That's mounted onto this board too. We've then got some basic circuitry on this. I don't know what's on the other side of this board. We will pop it out before finishing the video to have a look. And then we've got our other two boards, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. So what I'm going to do is pop out that main board and then we'll move over to the others. Okay, so the screws are out. So what we're gonna do is carefully lift this board up. Underneath this, I can see that there is plenty of circuitry under there. So what we're going to need to do is undo the cable from the fan that runs across from the center, which is the fan for the anti-fog, to this connection over here, just like on the others. So we're going to very carefully release this one. There we go. That's released. And then that leaves us our main bottom board. Okay, so there is the main PCBs from the goggle. All that's left in the shell right now is the DC board over here and the switch board or the IO board there. Now, it doesn't appear that there's any circuitry on this board. It just looks to be a switch, a connection, and then that goes to that IO RF board area over here. Now, what I'm going to do next is walk you through the circuitry and the overall components on these boards. To do this, I'm going to move over to still images because it is the best way for me to show you this. It will allow me to walk you through each board individually, and I'll also then be uploading those images to repair.wiki, available for people should they want them to. So what we're going to do is walk you through the PCBs on the HD Zero goggles and I'm going to try and explain the circuitry as well and highlight some things that you should be aware of. We're going to start with this which is the first RF board. There are two of these, one on the left, one on the right and these are what have our SMA inputs. If we follow the circuit you can see from the bottom port it comes in, goes through some small components into this IC here, goes out of this, up through these components into this IC here here, then out of that into what's likely an RF filter into this DiviMath DM6302. The circuit for the other SMA is exactly the same, comes up into this chipset here, into this chipset here, into the filter and into the DiviMath chipset. These are most likely RF preamplifiers and the DiviMath chipset, the DM6302, is an RF front end chipset or an RF transceiver that is taking that RF signal and converting it into a purely digital one. If we spin it around to the back of the board, there really isn't a lot to see here. Some sundry components going to our main connector. The main RF front end is on this side here, and it's exactly the same on the other board, just a different layout, one for the left, one for the right. Again, SMA coming in through the two chipsets into the DM6302, and again, the same down there. These boards are identical to the layout that we've seen on the VRX module. There's really nothing new here. It's simply that there's two separate boards rather than it being one single one. And if we look at the back of this, again, it's exactly the same sundry components going in to our main connector. Next, we have the first of what I'm calling the I.O. boards. There is a lot more going on here, and actually there's a lot more going on on one of the boards than there is the other. This is the board on the right-hand side of the goggles, or the side of the goggles with the power input. If I just label up some of the components on here, just to make it a bit easier for you to see, we've got on the left our ESP32, which is giving us our Express LRS 
backpack functionality. You can see the Wi-Fi antenna there for that as well. We've got our second DM chipset. This is the DiviMath main transceiver. This is what takes the signal from that other DiviMath chipset and then converts it and decodes it. This is the heart of the HD0 system, the DM5680T, and this is what gives it its ultra low latency. We then over here have a HDMI port and this is the board with the HDMI out. So that's chipset, the IT66121 is an HDMI transceiver. We've got our microphone located up here for doing the built-in audio recording. And then we've got our other two ports over here. We've got the one over there. One of them is head tracking and one of them is our headphones. You can see at the bottom, there are some additional components. We've got a component here. This is most likely a voltage regulator. There's some sundry components all over, most likely voltage regulation. You can see there's a coil on this one here. We've got some protection here for the HDMI port. Again, most likely another voltage regulator over there as well. If we flip over to the back of this board, you'll see we have our connector that goes to that RF board. So this is what is taking the input from that first DiviMath transceiver into that main one. But there's some sundry components. But something that is interesting on this right hand board is this area here, because this is actually where the main power input to the goggles appears to come in. You do have that DC jack on that secondary board that's located at the bottom with the power switch, but there doesn't appear to be any circuitry on that at all. That comes straight into this connector you see here. So if I go back, that is this connection here. This brings the main power input to the goggles. And then what we've got on the back in this area here is a voltage protection diode and appears to be our fuse as well. And this fuse is most likely what will blow if you actually had the wrong input voltage on the goggles. So for instance, if you were to over voltage them, it's potentially this that's going to blow. Or if you were to do some damage via reverse voltage, it's most likely going to be this this diode here. If we move over to the other board on the left hand side, there's a bit less going on on this one. We have again our DiviMath chipset, the transceiver. This is taking that signal from that RF front end via the connector on the back. This time we've got a HDMI receiver rather than a transmitter because this is the HDMI input. We've got a crystal over here. We've got our audio video input or analog AV input and our SD card. And then if I go to the back, we've got our speaker on the rear as well as our fan control output over here. It's clear there's a lot more going on on one of the boards than the other, but overall they are very similar. Next, we have our main PCB. This is that board that was located in the bottom of the main housing of the goggles. Now, there are obviously two sides on this board with all of the main components being on the top side that points up towards that fan. Again, if I label everything up, we'll start at the left. We've got a TP2825 L, which is an analog to digital IC. I believe this is taking our AV input and our analog bay input, converting it into digital for our displays. And this is also what's most likely doing that deinterlacing that Carl has added in the HD0 system as well. We have our FPGA here in the middle, which has always been the case in the HD0 system, with one gigabit of SD RAM located below. We've got our new main SOC. This is an all winner V356 mobile SOC, which has dual core A7 1.2 gigs cores. It's an ISP that's capable of hardware encoding both H.264 and H.265 video streams. And this is what's going to be running the main Linux OS on the system and handling the DVR as well. Over here, we've got our DDR3 SRAM, which is 4 gig. This is for this main chipset. And then we've got 512 megabyte of serial SPI nor flash down the bottom here, a power module, and then we've got our main sundry components located around the board. 
Moving over to the rear, we'll find a few other interesting bits. We have another 4GB DDR3 RAM chip and another NorFlash chip. The setup of this is most likely that you have this Winbond chip and this RAM chip for the main all winner SOC, and then this SD RAM chip, the SD RAM on the back, and the Winbond chip for that FPGA. So one for the Linux OS, one for that HD0 system. The HD0 element is sort of not separate to the main OS, but it sits alongside it. So what you'll then have is that FPGA doing the heavy lifting for the HD0 system, just like we've seen in the HD0 VRX module. And then this all winner chip running the main OS and all of the extra features that we have in the HD0 goggles. If you look around the board, you can see some of the little interesting things. For instance, if we go to the rear again, there is a debug port over here. So we've got a TX, RX and ground. And there are various ports located around the PCBs. You can see them located there and there. And what's really nice to see is everything is extremely well labeled up. It's nice and easy to see. And if you did want to start getting in there, getting into the debug port, there is no issues finding where to do that. Also around this board, there are connectors that are unused. For instance, you've got this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. These are not used in the normal current build of the HD0 goggles. I'm not exactly sure what each of these is for, but it is interesting that they are on the PCBs. They are located there. Whether they're there for programming at factory or they're there for future use, I don't know. But it is interesting that you do have these things located at various places on the board. Okay, now the last bit just to show you is the bottom plate with the optics module. I'm not going to tear this completely apart. I don't feel it's necessary, but I did just want to give you a bit of an overview of what we have. So we have our optical module on either side with our OLED displays on the back. You can see our ribbon cables coming out and there's actually heat sinks on the back of each of the displays, very similar to what we saw in the Avatar HDs. We then have our rails, which allows us for our adjustments. So if I move them in and out, you can see that the IPD adjustments like that. And then if I do the focus adjustment, what you'll actually see is the display itself move in and out. So if I just show you that there, you can see that it is moving in and out on the module. Let me just find the better angle to show that. There you go. And that's what's given us our focus adjustment as we're moving the displays in and out of the lenses. Now this module is screwed to the bottom. There's a screw down there in the middle. I can't see any other screws around. If you did want to remove it, you could. Really, there's nothing other than that to see here. And again, the only thing I just want to stress is you do need to be careful with these ribbon cables because once they're damaged, the display is knackered and you're going to need to replace it. Next, I want to talk about the SMA port mod. Since the release of the HD0 goggles, we've seen a small number of users accidentally damage their goggles by knocking the port, and this is causing the actual connector to rip from the PCB. There hasn't been a great number of these, but it has highlighted a bit of a weakness in the design in this area. There's probably a bit too much space around the SMA port on these goggles than needed, and as a result of that, if you're able to knock the port, it could result in in that damage in the board. There is going to be a modification for any new goggles that leave the factory today to improve this, but there is something you can do if you already have a set of HD0 goggles. Carl has released some files that allow you to print a spacer, which helps remove that movement, and a user has also created some mods as well, and what I'm going to do is walk you through that process. Just to be clear, at the point of me making this video, which is at the end of January 23, these goggles are affected, but any goggles that basically come off the production line after this point will have this spacer fitted already, so anything manufactured after, say, February 23 should be fine. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at what this little mod is all about. Okay, so it's now time to talk about the modification to the SMAs. Now, if you look in these goggles, and it's not very easy to see here, you can see we obviously have our two, the one sticking out the front and the one going down to the top. The one at the front goes into that collet that goes into the goggles. However, the one at the top doesn't. You can see around the connection that there's quite a bit of space. That also stands under here as well, and there's nothing really supporting that SMA connector. 
Now, in normal use, I don't think this is going to be a problem. However, if you were to drop the goggles, for instance, and hit this area so your antenna was mounted and it caught it and put pressure, you could then break free this SMA connector from the main PCB. Now, just to look at this a bit closer, you can see we've got our SMA coming in, we've got our leg either side of the connection, which is the ground, and then our center pin going to the PCB. The legs on the connection actually go to both sides of the board, and it does offer a lot of strength. However, if you were to drop the goggles, because there is a bit of space around that SMA connector, it means there's the possibility of it actually tearing from the board and causing damage to where it's soldered in place and lifting the track. The fix or the improvement on this is that we add some 3D printed plastic spacers around the SMA, therefore removing its ability to move and hopefully then causing less damage if you were to drop the goggle. Now there are a number of spacers available. We have the HD Zero ones up here which Carl has posted which you can 3D print but there are some by Tim Fredrickson that not only go at the bottom like the HD Zero ones but there's some collets that go at the top helping you sandwich that connection in when you do the nuts up on the top of the goggle. Again preventing any excess movement and hopefully preventing any damage should you drop them. So what we're going to do first of all is mount the spacer on the top SMAs. Now mine have printed a little bit small, they are a little tight. Depending on your print settings, yours may just push over and go all the way to the bottom. Mine are going to need to be screwed on, so that's what I'm going to do next. So as you can see we've screwed the spacer all the way down and it's now bottoming out so it can't go any further. If we then now put this back to the goggles and if we then look at just popping this back in very carefully, lowering it back down into the casing. Now there are rails that you will need to slide the boards into as you're placing them in. You're also going to want to make sure that you're not catching that SMA on the plastic over there as well. So what we're going to do is just very carefully now make sure we've located it in the right place, drop it in, press that down so the connection is in all of the way, and then you can now see that at the bottom of that SMA there, you can see that the grommet or that new spacer is bottomed up against the goggle. If I spin the goggle over, you can now see the black in there rather than that open space that we had in there before. Now, that spacer alone is going to improve things. However, there is then a second spacer that you can add on the top here, which is more like a collet. That will actually be dome shaped like this one here. And what that will then do is when you place the nut on the top, it will then tighten down and sandwich that board in place, preventing any movement on that top connector at all. So there I've pushed the collet all the way down. We can then take our two washers, our spring washer and our grip washer, and then our nut. And then when I tighten these down and actually tighten that properly, it will make this connection completely rigid, preventing any possible movement on that connection and thus preventing any possibility of it damaging the board below. So that's all tightened down. If I screw my antenna in place now, you'll see that this is absolutely solid. There's no chance of movement there at all. And if I was to drop the goggles and damage this, it should then prevent any damage to the PCB. Just something to note though, I have put the washers back on with the nut. You do need to check that it isn't gonna cause your antenna to bottom out before it makes connection properly. It does look like on the true RCs, it is bottoming out. So what I'm probably gonna do now is remove one of the washers try it again and if it isn't right remove both washers and then I'll simply tighten the nut down into the plastic. So that's the one side done it's now time to do the other. So that's the spacer done on this side time to place the boards back together so what I'm going to do is just place the connections together carefully on that back one and then pop this back in the chassis again being careful not to cause any damage, making sure that they're back in their correct places. So there's a rail on each side they need to go into, just like that. And then give it a good press. Give that connection a press down there as well. Very important, you do give that a push to make sure that it is fully latched in. And you want to do that on both sides. And then you can see it's exactly the same. We're going to put that collet on the top 
and tighten it down. So all done. As you can now see, it is really nice and solid. That's going to hold the boards in place nice and solid as well. Now, there are some spaces available for the front ports too if you wanted to do it. I didn't actually fit them at the point of me doing the top ones. I can though still do it because there's plenty of space around these on either side if I wanted to. The one thing to note though, any spaces you put around the front ones are not going to offer the same level of stability as the ones on the top wire because you've got this sort of collar that has to be fitted anyway. So for instance, if I just show you, if I place that collar on, you can see but there is space around the connector. So again, there is the potential to put a spacer in there, which will help. But the real improvement comes with the top ones. But if you did want to do the front ones, you can do them too. So the final thing to do is reassemble them. Now, I'm not going to do this as a step by step, but it really is as straightforward as we're going to put the fans back in. We're then going to very carefully put the ribbon cables back over the top, secure them down. And I will talk about that as I do that and then put the shells back together. OK, so what we're going to do is very carefully maneuver the connector so it falls into place. You can manipulate it from above. And then when you get it over the top and in the right place, you're going to need to put some pressure on it so it drops in. If you can get it to stay there, it can be easier to do with your finger. You need to make sure, though, that it is in the right place before you put the pressure on. So there, it's now locked in. If I just give it a push, I can see it's not moving. I'm then going to do the same on the other side. So again placing it down where it needs to be, finding where it locks in, and I can feel it's locked in place, then giving it a press, and then you will feel that connection go in. You don't want to put pressure on unless you know it's in the right place. So now I can feel that one is locked in, that one is locked in, and I'm now able to get the metal brackets that go over the top and then screw them down. So I'm going to take the first one, Place it roughly where it needs to be. One screw in place at the moment and get that so it drops in the hole. Take my Phillips screwdriver and tighten him down so it starts to bite. That way I know I'm starting to get it in the right place. There we go. Then I'm going to get the last screw that's missing from this. It's probably easier to do this with a pair of tweezers. That way you know you're getting the screw exactly where you need it to be. So I'm going to bring that forward, drop that in like that. And then very carefully with the small Phillips, start to get it so it goes to where it needs to be. There we go. And then I'm going to tighten down both sides to they're about even, so where they just start to bite. There we go. And I'm simply going to tighten these so I can allow my fingers to slip. Not that there's massive pressure, but it's not going to come loose by itself. There we go. And it's simply that. You don't want to force these down because if you were to force them, you would easily damage them. Now to do the other side, this time I've got both screws in this one, not sure how that's going to pan out. We'll give it a try and see how it goes. We're again going to start the first screw so we know it's in place. There we go. Start the second screw. There we go. So I can now tighten that down so it just starts to bite on the connection. Same that side there. And again, what I'm going to do is simply turn the driver until my fingers start to slip. So you can see there's no natural turning on that. There we go. It's just there. And then that is our ribbon cables connected and held in place. So now the final task is just to put the two halves of the shells back together. What we're going to do is just carefully rotate them over. Get everything lined up so it all slots where it should. So our straps on either side carefully press it down just have a look at the front as well as we're doing this making sure that everything goes in nicely 
and then we're going to get the clips to clip in at the front. Give it a bit of a push at the side. Make sure all of our connections underneath have come through correctly. Have a bit of a look around before we do anything else. Make sure that everything moves correct. Two shells look good. And then what I'm going to do before actually putting the screws in is just power the goggles on and make sure the displays work as expected because what you don't want to do is put them completely back together and find something isn't working so at this point my advice would be the safest bet is just to power them up have a quick look through to make sure everything is doing what it should be doing Overall, so as you've seen, the teardown is fairly straightforward. These goggles are really well made. They're really well thought out and put together. You've also seen the mod for the SMAs as well. And as I've said, if your goggles are probably February 23 onwards production, you're going to be fine. If you've got goggles before that, though, I wouldn't say you have to do this. I wouldn't say it's a design flaw. I think it's just something that adds a bit of protection if you were to drop the goggles or hit the ports. But in normal use, I would not expect this to be a problem at all and if you're someone that doesn't think you're going to have a problem like that then I wouldn't worry about it if you're looking after your goggles it shouldn't be an issue HD zero have also said that if you have a set that you don't want to do this mod on yourself you could pay the postage and send it back to them and they will do it for you so that's an option that is available for you too now if you have found this video interesting please do make sure you are subscribed. I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts on this teardown. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons again as well. I could not keep making content on this channel without their support. And if you'd like to support us, please do consider checking out the link to either my Patreon or buy me a coffee in the description. It's only through the support of everyone who does do that donation am I able to keep going. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.